Hey everyone, welcome to week 11 in our Immersed Bible series. And this week we are getting into the Gospel of Matthew. One of my favorite books in the New Testament because it's so rich with the teaching of Jesus. It's where we get a lot of the ethical and parabolic kind of teaching of Jesus. He uses stories and exhortation to teach us the life of being a disciple for the kingdom of God. So there's a lot of stuff to dive into as you look at Matthew, but I want to point out a couple things to you as you're reading that you may not grab onto as you initially read through the gospel. One of the things that you notice about Matthew is that it's very much a Jewish gospel. It seems to be written to a Jewish audience. And one of the, way we, one of the ways we know that is the way that Matthew is structured. For example, if you look at the very beginning of Matthew's Gospel, in chapter 1 you have the genealogy of Jesus which links him back to David and back to Abraham, which is an important descriptor for a Jewish Messiah. He has to have that credibility, that, that line with him. In chapter 2 we see the story about the birth of Jesus and we have the story of Herod the Great and the Magi, uh, which we kind of look at during the season of Epiphany. The Magi come to worship Jesus. Herod, of course, is enraged. He believes this is a threat to his throne. He orders all the babies in Bethlehem under two years old to, uh, to be killed. And Joseph, in a dream, learns about this in advance. And he takes Mary and the baby off to Egypt where they live until Herod is dead. They come back and settle in Nazareth. Chapter three, Jesus is baptized in the Jordan River. And then in chapter four, Jesus goes into the wilderness for 40 days to be tempted by Satan. So notice the pattern. The baby is born. He's rescued from destruction by a, a, an evil ruler. He goes to Egypt. Out of Egypt he comes, he goes through the water, and then into the desert for 40 days. Who does that remind you of? If you think back to the Old Testament, it should have an echo for you of the Moses story. Moses, of course, born into slavery. He is, uh, there's a threat to Pharaoh's kingdom. He orders all of the babies of the Israelites, the male babies, to be, to be thrown into the river. Moses is spared. His mother puts him in a basket, sends him down the river. He's picked up by an Egyptian princess where he's raised as an Egyptian until he leads the Israelites out of Egypt through the water of the Red Sea and into the wilderness for 40 years. What's Matthew's point in structuring the story in this way? Jesus is the new Moses. A lot of familiar images that we see in the other Gospels but the way Matthew structures it for a Jewish audience is to remind them that Jesus is the new Moses. And by the way, if you go even further, in chapter 5, we see Jesus teaching where? On a mountain, as though he is bringing the law to the people, just as Moses went up on Sinai to receive the law from God in the Ten Commandments. Jesus brings these new commandments to the people, taking the Mosaic law and saying, you've heard that it was said, but I say to you, and going to God's original intent. And so that's part of the teaching emphasis there in Matthew. We get some of the marvelous parables of Jesus here in Matthew's Gospel. Chapter 13, for example, has a series of parables about the kingdom that are very rich uh, for our understanding. So as you read through the Gospel of Matthew, I hope you'll look at this emphasis and, and ask how this teaching applies to your life. How has Jesus brought you freedom? And how has his teaching enabled you to live more of the life of the kingdom? Which for Jesus is really the promised land that we're all going to. The kingdom of God, God's reign and rule on the earth. Happy reading, and we'll see you next week.